Hey, free to play gang, seriously, how are some of you guys climbing so fast? Okay, so now we have actually reached the point where I need to make Fafnir videos. I didn't think I'll need to do it so soon, but anyway, let's get right into it immediately. So I'm going to start off with like some of the more free to play experts that you can bring into Fafnir. And some of these experts are actually really good options over here. So I'm going to discuss all the free to play options. And in a separate video, I'll talk more about some of the gacha experts, or so called the pay to win experts, and why they are very good for Fafnir. And the reason why I want to expand a little bit away from just simply being free to play is because I will assume that Fafnir is a content that you cannot really just clear as a free to play player. Okay, I mean, obviously you can clear as a free to play player, but due to the difficulty of Fafnir, I would have expected you guys to at least pull some really good espers first before even diving so deep into Fafnir. So I think one of the most hilarious things that I've heard so far is that some of you guys have not even done APEP 10 and you're trying to clear Fafnir. I mean, it is possible, you just need to do very well in your Kronos 10 and you should be able to go into Fafnir no problem. So Kronos 10 is where you want to farm up some of your really good War Machine relics and some really good Windwalker relics as well. So with these two, you generally just need these two relics and you're pretty much good to go. Although I would say that Astro Witchcraft has a little bit of use over here because the boss does disable some of your espers. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video immediately. Okay, so the first Esper that is a really good choice as a free-to-play player is going to be Gabrielle. So she is a fusion Esper, so you can only get her through fusion. You can't actually get her through the gacha banner or whatever. So she's really good because she has multi-hits on her second skill. This is one of the reasons why, of course, it's not all the reasons. Okay, so on her second skill, she has a triple hit with the potential to land a defense break. But I don't really think defense break is going to be that crucial because honestly, most of the time, Fafnir is going to be immune unless you build a team around removing his immunity, which I may not necessarily suggest. And of course, apart from her second skill, her third skill is also extremely good for Fafnir because of the immunity buff that she brings and a little bit of defense as well. So the reason why immunity and defense is going to be so important is because honestly, in my opinion, when you want to go into Fafnir, you don't necessarily need a healer, except for maybe Clara and Sally. I think these two healers are still quite useful over there. Now, immunity is going to be really good because the boss lands a lot of slows, he lands a lot of stuns as well, so immunity is going to protect you from all of that, except for the freezing effect. Okay, so the boss does land one freezing effect that will just bypass all of your buffs, so immunity isn't going to protect you that way. And of course, last but not least, she is supposed to be very fast. So mine is at like 279. So generally, you want your Gabrielle to be as fast as possible, so she would naturally fit into Fafnir. And of course, apart from that, she also has ally HP leader buff over here, which can be quite useful, especially if you're finding a little bit of trouble just sustaining yourself through the fight without a single healer. This can be quite useful. Okay, another very free to play option is going to be Liling. Yes, he is not a very good element against Fafnir, so he has the potential to suffer a lot of losses, but there are of course some ways that you can protect him. But the reason why he's so good is because he lands 5 attacks on his second skill, and he also lands 3 attacks on his third skill. So he would be able to land a lot of multi-hits, which is one very good way of removing the boss shield buff. Okay, and this has to be said, Tang Yun is an exceptional choice for Fafnir, not because he is very easy to max out, but also because he does the most number of guaranteed hits in one skill. So I'm talking about his third skill over here, which hits three times, followed by a 100% chance to inflict iron pole arm on the target. So basically, he immediately hits four times with a 30% chance to hit again, and then another 30% chance to hit again once more afterwards. And of course, not only this, he also has a second skill that hits twice with a 50% chance to hit for a third time, which then triggers more iron pole arms that way. So he is going to be an excellent choice in Fafnir. Now, the way you want to build him is, you don't necessarily need to follow me, but the way that I like to build him is to give him a lot of attack and give him Avatara as well. It's very important that he has Avatara because as long as he counterattacks, he has the potential to pursuit as well, which can remove a lot more shields on the boss. So for starters, you can either go with Windwalker or War Machine. I think War Machine is going to be slightly more impactful, but Windwalker is going to be more for like stable Fafnir runs. But the thing is, but the thing is, you're not just going to use him in Fafnir, you're going to use him in other content as well. So maybe War Machine is going to be a little bit better. And next is going to be Baroness. She is an excellent choice for Fafnir and I guarantee you that she has to be a permanent stay in your Fafnir team. So because you're not going to be running healers all that much, she is going to be your sole healer so to speak because of her third skill here. Not only does she give you a shield buff based on her max HP, she also grants your entire team with recovery which is going to be quite important especially like if you take a lot of turns, you're going to heal yourself that way. So this is your only form of self-regeneration over here. And not only her shield buff being useful, her first skill itself is extremely powerful as well. It hits three times and it lands a defense break as well. So this is going to be very useful, especially when you immediately encounter the boss and you instantly land a defense down. That's when you can drop a lot of damage. 
And of course her second skill triple hits as well, so you hit 3 times with a 50% chance of reducing your target's AP by 15%. This can be quite useful, but probably not so much for Fafnir. So the way that you want to build her is with a lot of HP and a lot of speed. Okay, so you take a look at her third skill over here. Grants all ally experts a shield equal to 22% of her own max HP for 2 turns. This is insane. This is, this is really insane. She is the best shielder in this game just because of this skill. And of course, if an ally is buffed, the shield strength increases by another 30%. So it goes up to like 29%. Naturally, what you want is going to be Avatara, but honestly, if you have Master Grove, that works as well. But I prefer Avatara because she can counter attack with a triple hit, which is always nice. And definitely, you need a lot of speed and a lot of HP. So that's what I'm going with over here, HP, HP, and speed. Now, Lin is a pretty good choice. I would say that she's quite good, uh, but there are some downfalls to building her, and I'll explain a little bit more. So she has a double hit over here, which then grants herself immunity, which can be quite useful, especially in Fafnir, so that you protect yourself after you attack. And then for a second skill, she actually hits three times, dealing quite a decent amount of damage, which is going to be quite good. And she even has an opportunity to dispel buffs from the boss, which means that you can actually strip the immunity from Fafnir. So, so she's actually one of the better ways for you to remove the immunity buff from Fafnir. And now as for her third skill, this is really quite good, okay? So you deal damage equal to 240% of your attack, which is quite high. It goes up to 280%. And you grant yourself a shield that absorbs damage equal to 35% of your max HP for 2 turns. But if you land a crit, the shield strength actually increases by another 50%. And of course, you do a little bit more damage that way. So this shield is going to be a little bit useful, I would say. It's a little bit useful because the thing is, if you use this to chip away the boss HP and remove one of his HP bar, he is going to strip away all of your buffs anyway. So this shield is not going to be that effective in my opinion. Okay, and now the reason why I say that she's not necessarily such a good pick, even though her second skill clearly removes immunity, which can somehow speed up your runs right so the reason why i say that she's not that good is because she has absolutely no value in any other content you will not see her being used in any content at all not even in apep not even in chronos definitely because of her element and you probably won't even use her in temporal tower or pvp or cube miracle so she's basically just limited to fafnir which is why i think she's not that good but this is just one of the reasons right so the other reason is that her main selling point i would say is that she can remove buffs however it is not necessary for you to remove buffs at all so there are two ways that you can kill fafnir right now one is to just damage him until he dies right you don't even care about removing his immunity you don't really care about landing debuffs at all and the other way is to just drop a lot of debuffs instantly and then nuke him down in one single hit using a Zelma, which is what I'm going to talk about later. And of course, thirdly, she is extremely expensive to build. So not only am I talking about like, let's say, essential materials, right? Because she's an epic as well, you're going to need more essential materials. But resonance is going to be extremely tough as well because how are you going to find extra copies of Lin? And therefore, you're not going to really benefit so much from like the percentage gain instead. However, if you focus more on rare aspects, it's going to be super easy for you to gain that 24% extra attack power or extra HP or whatever it is. And also, please take note that you are at a state of the game where epic ability mods do not come by very easily. So it is extremely expensive to be spending your epic ability mods just to upgrade her skills when you can be using it for some other more viable aspects instead. So I think if you really want to invest into the long, long term of Fafnir, then maybe Lin is going to be a decent choice, but I would still highly recommend some of the rare aspects instead. And now moving on to the last free-to-play Esper, that's going to be Zelma. But of course, last is just my own opinion. There could be some other Espers that may make the list as well. So this is, these are just my opinions, okay? So Zelma is also a pretty good choice. So her first skill hits the enemy twice with a chance to land defense break, which is okay. And her second skill hits the enemy three times, which deals damage and then transfers debuffs to the target, which is uh, it's not that good over here, but it's just a triple hit, I guess. But her third skill is where she is super, super strong. So take a look at this, right? Deals damage equal to 220% of your attack to an enemy. And if the target is debuffed, then this attack deals 20% bonus damage per debuff. So basically, if the boss has like up to 12 debuffs, I think 12 is the max. I'm not actually sure about that. But if the boss has 12 debuffs, that's going to be an additional 240% attack, which basically goes up to 460%. So this is going to be insane DPS and this is how you can one-shot the boss. I don't actually have a footage of this, so I'm actually trying to retrieve the one-shot footage but I, I can't really get hold of it right now. Okay, and some of you guys might be wondering why did I not bring up Hall because of his passive here, right? Isn't he an excellent choice in Fafnir? Because each time one of your teammates attack individual targets, basically the boss, Hall then follows up with an extra strike dealing damage equal to 40% of his attack. So basically any of your Esper's attacks, be it just a single hit or a multi-hit, is going to trigger him to land one extra hit. So basically, all of your other aspers are going to have one extra attack into each of their multi-hits. 
But why do I say that Hall is a bad choice over here? Okay, so there are a few reasons, okay? So one reason is because Hall does not have any multi-hits, okay? His third skill hits two random enemies which cannot be relied on as a multi-hit and his first skill only hits one single target. Now let's talk about his passive over here. There are two reasons why I don't like this passive. Okay, so reason number one, you're not always going to be using attacks, right? So sometimes you're going to be buffing, like let's say you're using a Baroness. What if your Baroness is using a shield buff, right? During that point of time, you're actually not only wasting your triple hit from Baroness, but you're also wasting his passive over here so basically Hall becomes extremely useless whenever Baroness has to use her shield up but then you're saying yeah but I still have other Espers who can attack so what's wrong with that so here's the problem okay so Baroness is super fast which is why she works really well with Hall. Okay, so fast Espers work really well with Hall. That's, that's easy enough to understand. So your DPS Espers are not necessarily going to be so fast so they're not going to benefit your Hall that much and to add on to that, okay, so let's say you have one Hall and you have one Baroness and you have three other DPS Espers, right, who purely land attacks. Isn't it a little bit more efficient to just use a triple hit instead of using Hall? Because you're technically just being a triple hitter by bringing Hall into play with three other DPS Espers, right? So long story short, I think Hall is not going to be so good of a choice, although I think he has some niche use on his second skill, which I may revisit in the near future. But in terms of Fafnir, I don't think he's going to be so good of a choice. But of course, these are just my opinions. Feel free to disagree and feel free to add on any other Espers that you think deserves to be on this list. So like, let's say maybe you think the Twins deserve to be on this list, that's fine. Just let me know down in the comments below. And of course, I think some players might be even running Espers such as Falcon and all that. But I'm going to talk about some of these more uh, so-called pay-to-win Espers because you need to summon them. Uh, pay-to-win Espers in a separate video. I think for this video, I just want to keep it to free-to-play Espers. Not only because the video is dragging on for a little bit too long, but I think this is going to be a better video for some of you guys out there who are just starting out in Fafnir and not knowing what to do. So therefore, here are some really good free-to-play options. Now with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And subscribe for more dislike content. Why not, right? Anyway, this has been Daddy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.